Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show for Friday, September 16th, 2022. Welcome to another eBay video. Today's main topic is going to be about eBay Open 2022 next week. I'm going to tell you the schedule. I'm going to give you an idea of what's going on and when it's going to happen. I'm also going to talk about a few eBay incidents this week, and of course, your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. So that being said, let's get right into your comments, questions, and concerns. T-Town Trekker wrote, Joe, when I make an offer to a seller, I always show appreciation for their accepting my offer by making immediate payment. Then, after switching to eBay Managed Payments from PayPal, I started getting a pop-up screen to make immediate payment when I make an offer. It worked perfectly for me because I always did anyway, and it saved me clicks and time from the old way with PayPal. So maybe I'm in a trial, or maybe it's the category I trade in. But I, until hearing you talk about immediate payment, thought everyone already did. Unfortunately, that is not the case, T-Town Trekker. Nobody pays me right away when I accept their best offer. It's sad and it's pathetic. Right now, you want to take a guess how many unpaid items I have open? Does anybody want to take a guess? Anyone? Seven. Seven right now. And that is not the high for the week. The high was eight. Then a couple of people paid. Then I accepted some more best offers. So we'll see what happens. Whiplash the Snake wrote in with a crazy story, and it's one I can definitely identify with. So everybody listen carefully to this sad story. Hey, Joe. Strange question from a strange case I'm currently stuck in the middle of. I had a buyer just yesterday send me an offer on an item, and apparently he attached a message to it, which I missed. After accepting the offer and waiting for payment, he sent me a message asking why I didn't reply to his message in the offer and asked again about the details of the item. The item was a used, a used vintage Emerson alarm clock with radio, and he wanted to know if everything worked as I had it used. I replied it did. It just has the wear and tear of something electronic that has been around and used since the late 1980s. The guy pays and says he expects a full refund and for me to pay return shipping if the item is trash and I accept the terms and send the item within hours of him buying it. I wake up this morning to a nasty letter threatening feedback extortion, saying he's going to return the item as soon as he gets it, and that I was not up front with him, and saying he wants to cancel. I was stuck in a bind and had to rush to the USPS to retrieve my item before it was sent out, which I did. I sent the buyer the refund, canceling the sale, but I had scanned the item in at the kiosk at the post office so I'm out the shipping cost. Both USPS and eBay refuse to reimburse me for the postage spent since it has a scan on it. What can I do in this situation? Whiplash the snake. Your story is not unique. I told a story a few weeks ago about how a person sent me a legitimate best offer and then attached a love note. It is very easy to miss those love notes. I totally feel your pain. I've done the same thing myself, okay? What's different about your case is the guy paid you, all right? That makes your case unique from all of mine. In a couple of minutes, or even maybe a couple of seconds, I'm going to jump away and I'm going to tell you a story about what happened to me which is very similar to your story, except the guy never paid. Buyers should never send you a best offer 
and ask you questions in the love notes section. That should not be allowed. eBay really needs to change the design of the best offer tool because it's really hurting sellers badly and even some buyers are making mistakes. In your situation, gosh, what could you do? Well, I know you blocked the guy, so that's good news right there. All right? That guy, that buyer, did everything wrong that he possibly could. All right? When he sent you, I, I realize you didn't see the love note when you accepted the offer, but I, I got to ask you a question. If you had noticed that love note before you accepted the offer, what would you have done? Would you have still accepted the offer? I'm asking you that now because I have a great story that relates exactly to your case, Whiplash the Snake. And I have it right here. I started telling you guys this story either last week or the week before about a bad buyer who sent me an offer on an item. The item was $90 plus shipping. He sent me an offer of, I believe, $60. I refused it. Just plain that decline because it's a real hot item. He then sent me a counter offer right away for $70. All right? That's not enough for this item because this is a super hot item. I know if I wait, I can get the 90. But because the guy seemed legit, I sent him a counter offer for $80, figuring A, he'd jump on the offer, or possibly he would decline it. Either one was fine with me. But I wasn't expecting what happened next. He then contacts me and he says, is this the one with the three inch logo? I just ordered one, but it was five inches, which is not the right one, so I had to return it to the seller. Okay? That is a huge, huge, huge warning sign. It's like somebody holding up a stop sign right in the middle of the street. And I always go with my gut and I always try and use common sense. This buyer should never have asked that question after not only sending one best offer, but two. The guy's obviously a nut. Here is my reply. I'm very concerned that you would send me not just one offer, but two best offers on an item, and then after all that, ask me a question about the item you already committed to purchase. That is not the way it's done on eBay. I have decided not to sell this item to you. Always ask all questions before making an offer. Now, I kind of had a feeling he was going to reply, and I'm going to read you the litany of messages he sent me after I take a sip of coffee. Okay, he wrote, first message. Seems silly to me to be concerned about a question. You sell it or you don't. Doesn't make me much difference. How simple can you be as a seller? I do great business on eBay and plan to do more with you. It's ignorant sellers like yourself that give eBay a bad reputation. I just bought a hubcap and it was the wrong one. Yours look like the right one. S-H-I-T. I don't know what I'm doing. I just bought the damn car and I don't need a-holes, although he used the whole word, like you making it hard for someone like me. It's my money I'm spending. Okay? He sends me that message. 20 seconds later, this one comes along. I've literally spent $24,000 last week on eBay for a 1966 Lincoln Continental convertible and parts for it, and I need a lot of parts for it, so it's more your loss than mine. I'm 32 years old, just trying to figure out this old car. Goodbye, I wish you well. You know, guys, I've heard of older people using age as an excuse. Like if a 75-year-old man writes, I'm 75 and I don't really understand how the internet works. I get that. Because 
the older generation didn't have any schooling and it's harder for them. I get in that case why he would use his age. Not this 32 year old millennial. What right does he have to use his age as an excuse? Crazy. Oh no, no, the story's not over yet. So what I did was I blocked him. I was so concerned about this guy circumventing my block list that I took the unusual step of ending the item. Bang! Ended it. Ugh! Pushed it off to the side. A couple of days later, I'm listing new items and I got another 1966 Lincoln Continental Hub. Not the same one, a different one. Actually in better condition. So this one I listed for more money. I was very concerned about this buyer starting a fake account just to buy my item. Within three hours of me listing this item, I get a best offer of $75. The guy has zero feedback. He registered the account just that moment to send me a best offer. Could it be? I checked the address. Bango! The same exact town in Massachusetts. All right? What do I do? I decline and block. This is the guy, remember, who said he'd never do any business with me. <whistles> what I have is hard to get. He needs it. If he would have just been the right way and asked questions first before sending best office, he would have got it. Okay. Fast forward now to Thursday. Yesterday afternoon, I get a best offer on the item. Same item. $90. The account is a legitimate account that's got about 1,500 feedbacks. Okay, that's good. But, but, it's registered in a nearby town in Massachusetts. Now, does it take a rocket scientist to deduce who's going to be getting this cap? Okay, given all the information I've told you, what would you have done at this point? There's only two choices. Decline and block the legitimate account. Or accept the $90 and hope the guy pays. Keep in mind that I feel the $90 was a fair price. I don't have a problem with the amount at all. And if the guy pays me, all right, I don't have a problem with that either. I don't care if he ships it to the other guy because I'm not dealing with that clown. I'm dealing with this guy who's got over 1,500 feedback. So I accepted the offer. Uh, at this time, I've not yet been paid. But if at any time I do get paid, I shall put it in the comment section below as an update. So, yeah. Whiplash the snake. Don't feel bad. It happens to all of us eBay really needs to do away with that love note section. Okay, let's move on to the next comment. LJ Whitmire wrote, For crap's sake, eBay is the worst technology company ever. I used to develop platforms much larger and much more complicated than eBay ever thought about being. These excuses they give about why they can't make all the buyer purchases end with automatic payment either indicates complete ineptness or a plain old lie. In my opinion, based on 20 plus years of software development, eBay is held together with off-brand band-aids. They are not fixing problems, but they're patching them over and over again until they no longer understand how the system actually works. I've seen it before, and eBay system exhibits all the telltale signs of poor development practices. LJ and everybody else, do you know that eBay crashed Wednesday night, approximately 10 p.m. New York time? Oh, my God. When I say crashed, I mean a heavy crash. I'm not saying maybe you couldn't upload pictures. I'm saying you couldn't even get into Seller Hub, all right? 
this was, it was short-lived. It was only maybe two hours they were offline, but it was a serious crash. Now, normally, when the site crashes, you can still access it on the app. I couldn't, all right? Not only could I not access it on the app, it totally crashed my app. Even the next day when the site was up and running, I could not use the app on my phone. It was totally ruined and corrupted. I had to delete it and reinstall it. So LJ or anybody out there that knows coding and that kind of thing, what do you think caused that? Why did my app crash? I'm just curious, please. Sad to say, LJ, I agree with you. The site's a mess. How often do you hear of Amazon crashing or Etsy or Macari? You don't. However, on the plus side, I got to be totally upfront because that's how I roll. eBay gets the traffic. All right. eBay can kick Macari's butt, Etsy's butt, Bonanza's butt, all of them with one hand tied behind their back. They are still the best place to sell. Amazon, to be honest, probably gets a little more traffic than eBay, but you're actually talking apples and oranges because most of the people shopping on eBay are shopping for things they could not get on Amazon. Okay? 1960 Blue Bug wrote, I meant to ask you last week from the video where you showed a nice couple come in asking about Toyota hubcaps. That was new for you and wondering why you turned the camera showing your conversation. Very professional, just a change that caught me by surprise. 1960 Blue Bug, I did that just to be different, okay? I figured you guys would enjoy it, and I'm really glad that you did. So yeah, since you guys seem to like it, I might do it again in the future. Skinny Cow wrote a sort of related comment, did you have the center cap available for that nice convertible Mercedes? He's referring to the lady that walked in last week when I was filming. And skinny cow, yes, I did. That was one fine ride that that lady had. A beautiful late model Mercedes convertible. I went out and looked at her rims. She has 20 inch rims with low profile tires. Either she doesn't know cause or she's got balls of steel having those around here. Because with all the potholes and road construction, you hit one big pothole with a tire like that, you're going to take out two tires and two rims on one side. Do you guys know that in many of the expensive cars like that one that come with alloy rims, the dealers sell something called wheel insurance? Hard to believe that dealers will not back up their own products. They want to charge you for wheel insurance. Last comment is also from 1960 Blue Bug. Joe, great story. I knew what the kid meant before you got to the end, but the way you told it had me and my wife rolling with laughter. Blue Bug is talking about the Thur story. <laughs> I have to admit that was funny. But I'm really happy that you guys liked it. I got a lot of positive comments on the Thur story. So here's to Thur. Okay. I want to talk now. My next topic I want to talk about is eBay Open 2022. I'm going to race through this as quickly as I can. It'll take a few minutes. Now, next week eBay Open 2022 is going to be held over a three-day period, those days being Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 21st, 22nd, 23rd. I'm going to read you a brief rundown now, but if you don't catch what I'm reading, don't worry. I'm going to put a link in the description box. You guys can check it out at your leisure. And I've also got a little interesting news, too. Starting off at Wednesday the 21st, that is the Regional Networking Day. It's the first day of the conference, and it will start off with the eBay executives talking to us and giving us updates and things like that. Then 
the event will break off into networking rooms, and they will be divided up as follows. The Middle Tennessee eBay Meetup Group is hosted by Alan Gilson. The Washington, D.C. Group by Harvey Armstrong. Los Angeles Group, Nanette Zupan. Uh-oh, you heard that? Or maybe you didn't hear it? I got a new offer. A new offer of $20. Well, I'm not going to race through and accept it now because I want to check the guy's history and all that. Where was I now? Oh, yeah, the South, Ca the South California Seller Group, hosted by Patty Coleman. The Texas Group by Stephanie Inge. Northeastern Sellers, hosted by Kathy Terrell. Michael Swoop. Trish Glenn, and Diane Lassan, and a few general networking groups. On Thursday, it gets more interesting. The topic-related groups. Listen to these. How to make the most out of eBay's promotional tools, hosted by Kathy Terrell. Shipping Demystified with Lori Bilyeu. Selling on eBay with Patty Whitlock. Let's talk about Bolos with Debbie Weeder. eBay for Charity with Cami Nyquist. Consignment Chat with Libby Broggy. eBay Modus Questions Answered, Joe DeMarco. And Top Tips for Auctions on eBay with Craig Dawson. Guys, once again, I am humbled that eBay has asked me to host the eBay Motors Networking Group. That will be Thursday. Last time I did this, I saw some of you cool cats show up. So if you sell an eBay Motors and you have time, please stop in, ask your eBay Motors questions, tell me your stories. I want to talk to you. I do realize if you guys sell in other categories, I know, Gary, you sell coins, and I do know that some of you sell in collectibles and Barbie dolls and those things, you got. You guys are going to want to go to other categories, other networking rooms, no problem. I get it. My room is for eBay Motors only, okay? Now, Friday. Friday, topic-based networking. Auctions. All about auctions with Donna Gardner. Don't forget accessories with Lee Baumeister. Customer service with Michael Swoop. Six-figure selling collectibles. Now, some of you guys should really like that one. That's with Jessica Omen and sourcing with Lisa Driscoll. Friday is also very important because it's the last day of the conference and there will be in-person events here in New York City, Los Angeles, and Austin, Texas. As I've said before, I will be in the New York City group in Manhattan, all day and night. Good news and bad news. For those of you guys who haven't figured it out yet, there will be no video next Friday night. I'll be in the city at the conference. I may go live from the conference, but I can't guarantee it, nor will I guarantee it. If I don't go live, what I will do is I'll take a zillion pictures and then I will do an eBay open 2022 video a day or two after the conference to share it with you guys who aren't able to make it. I'm sure other people will be going live as well, so I'll be meeting them and maybe you'll catch me on their shows. eBay, I believe, is also filming the event and hopefully we'll release that to the public at some point. If any of you guys are coming to the New York City event, feel free to come up and introduce yourself to me. I can't come to you because I don't know what most of you look like. So those of you guys who know me and want to say hello, please come and say hi. I'd love to see you. Maybe we could do a couple of pictures together. Maybe we could go live. You never know. It's going to be a great time. So basically, that's all I'm going to discuss about eBay Open right now. All right. I took a little break, and what I did was I went back to check that offer that the person sent me, and I decided to decline it. 
It's a popular item, and I know I can hold out and get more for it, so I just declined it. I don't mind if a person sends me an offer for 50% or more of what I'm asking. I would never accept the offer of 50%, but I can understand a buyer is looking to get a deal. All right. But lately, I have been inundated with some of the most insulting offers I have ever received in my 23-year eBay career. I had what I would call my world's record most insulting lowest offer. A guy offered me one-eighth one-eighth of my asking price for a hot item. When anybody insults me like that, I, of course, decline and I automatically block them because that's just insulting. You don't offer a person one-eighth of what they're asking. All right? I would never do that. Absolutely never. It's crazy. But it's just part of doing business online. Now it's to the point of the video, do I bring it to a close or I do I tell you a really quick, funny life story? All right? Bring it to a close or a life story? Hold, with, by a show of hands, how many people say, Joe, bring it to a close now, you've been on long enough? All right. Okay, no, no, that's okay, no sweat. As long as you say it respectfully, you'll get no guff from me. All right, how many of you guys want to hear a quick, funny life story? Okay. Give them what they want. You guys obviously want to hear a real funny life story, a quick one. This is under the topic of meeting somebody who you wouldn't expect to meet them. About five years ago, a customer came into my job to buy a hubcap. I got him his hubcap. It was what he wanted. He was happy. And he gave me his credit card to ring up. So I rang up his sale. And I looked at the name, and it was a very unusual name. For the sake of this video, let's say the name was Oppenheimer. Okay? I looked at the name. I looked at the guy. All right? He appeared to be in his late 60s. I said, Oppenheimer. I said, are you by any chance a teacher? Yes, I am, he said. I said, I had you. Freshman year of college. Introduction to probability. He says, yeah, yes, I did teach that. CCNY. I said, yeah, well, you had dark hair then because his hair was gray now. So we both had a good laugh about it, talked about the class, this and that. And that was the end of it. Okay? The very next day, I'm unloading stuff out of the trunk of my car outside in my driveway. And I hear somebody say, Hey, Joe. I look up. And it's Oppenheimer walking a dog. I said, you. I said, what are you doing here? He says, my daughter lives two houses down, Mary Smith. I said, you've got to be kidding. Two houses down from me is Mary Smith's house. And Oppenheimer is her old man. And we never knew it. <laughs> what are the odds of me meeting this guy first at my job then two days later, right in front of my house here, I couldn't make this up. And I still see him. He still goes by and we always wave. And that is my funny story for this week. Short but sweet. Guys, I'm Crazy New York Driver and you're not. Thanks for watching this video. Every Friday I make these videos to try and help you stay successful as an eBay seller. If you think I'm doing a good job, please leave me a thumbs up. If you don't think I did a good job, tell me what you want me to hit up next week. Please try and attend eBay Open, okay? If you're a seller, and you probably are because you're watching this video, I think it would be helpful to you. If you want to stop by and talk to me, 
in the eBay Modus chat. If you have eBay Modus questions, I'd love to see you. If you want to see me in person, I'll be downtown Manhattan Friday all day. Come visit, come say hi. But please remember everybody, no video next Friday. I'll put something out a few days later. Okay, rock on, make a lot of eBay sales, and peace!